Hey guys, we're going to China. Bye bye, doggy. Hello guys and welcome to yet another episode of German Turtle 05. Today's an extra special, extra long vlog where Ivy and I travel to China and do a bit of shopping. Now keep in mind this is only episode one of like five or six episodes that we'll be doing. So there's quite a lot to come and there's quite a lot to sit through. I figured I'd put you through the worst of it now in episode one. So bear with me and hopefully everything goes better as we go along. Right, now the flight to Guangzhou wasn't actually that bad. It was only eight hours, but I had been awake for the entirety of the night beforehand. However, being awake for this long did give me a chance to catch up on all of my favorite brainwashing Western hits on the plane. Uh, and it also gave me a chance to check out some new favorites of the pilots, such as Oops. Now this guy in front of me got me a bit worked up, so I defeated the entire plane at Tetris, keeping my track record of being the best Tetris player on every flight going, uh, just to vent a little bit. You can see there I need to warm up. But then, shortly after landing, I had my first culture shock moment. So, I just used an automatic flushing squatty potty for the first time. Did you actually squatty potty? Yeah, I did, I did, I did squatty potty. I did not use that. That was the scariest experience of my life. Um, yeah, I have no idea how to explain just how scary that was. Did you film it down? I almost fell in at one stage. Oh, wow. I almost fell in. What's this? Foreigner fingerprint self collection area. Okay. I guess I'll fingerprint myself for the 15th time in my life. Actually, this airport is so confusingly massive, like we're in one section, that's the section, bless you. There's sections over out that way, and then I'm right here. Please scan your passport. Scan for left hand fingerprints. Scan for right hand fingerprints. Scan two thumb fingerprints. Scan two thumb fingerprints. <laughs> Done? My thumb's actually going Oh, match. okay. Done. Please queue in the waiting area. I guess it's not here. Where's the waiting area? I don't know. So, I just got detained because I lost too much weight and I didn't look like me in the passport. And they held me for about half an hour. It was super scary. So far, this trip is a heart attack. There's your suitcase, Ivy, the big pink eyesore. <laughs> And here comes my modern contemporary work of art, which is now covered in scuff marks. Holy crap. Now in China, you're not allowed to film government locations, so filming within the airport was really restricted, especially at this checkpoint here, but I soon rectified that issue with shinies. Oh, shiny. Everything's so shiny. station's going to be and where the train's going. So I think that train station was about like a kilometer long or something. Now we have a line that's a kilometer long. Look at this. We're still in the same train station. Okay, so we made it just in time for our train. Yes. Uh, we're not allowed to enter the actual platform until 18 minutes before our train arrives. Departure. Depart before it departs. 
So now we're just standing in this massive, massive train station again. It's amazing. There's like two stories of food court back there. On the top level. Oh yeah, we're, we're one level up. There was another one downstairs. There's two. There's actually one more level down here as well. Well, two levels down here. Not including the metro basement, two floors as well. I'm so lost in this city. Well, that's three. One was back there, I swear. Welcome to Guangzhou, China. That sounds super boring. This place is so cool. We're going to go shopping now. In there. Because we're worth it. This is the K11 art. Now the K11 Art Mall is a new major shopping development designed to appear as an art exhibition. Its nature theme was designed to allow an ever-changing theme, keeping the mall looking fresh even as the years go by and the shops change. Now with all of these designer labels, it's easy to have your wife or girlfriend get lost in dreamy eyes. However, due to tax and import duties within China for international labels, everything here actually costs twice as much as it would back home. Shopping precincts such as these are primarily intended for the wealthier Chinese citizens. However, that didn't stop Ivy buying a cheeky dress or two. That's you standing there, on the left. At this point, Ivy suggested we enter the Lego store. I've never been to a Lego store before, so this was quite an experience for me. I do highly recommend it, however don't be fooled, everything is completely encased. I was very unfortunate to believe that I could access some of these amazing marvels. Oh, it looks like you can go through. I'll point out some of these prices. Essentially, if you want to get the US dollar value of each of these items, take the price you see on the shelf there and divide it by four. It's my favourite one. So mesmerizing. But that bit there says nature. There's a bear. Ivy, I think it wants a hug. What does it say? Just been here. Where are you going to where the light is tonight? You might be moving something without us knowing. Yeah, all the boxes are lighting up. There's some sort of a laser light that we're supposed to see. There, look. That's the actual laser up there. Well, what's it pointing at? Let's just go there. <clears throat> mushroom. Mushroom, mushroom. 
Look at that, that's just beautiful. What is this called? This is the Sky Stage, I'm pretty sure. What's this bit? Put your iPad there, I don't know. This place is paradise. Oh, sorry table. That'll be Basil over here. They spelled Basil wrong. It's not Brazil. Nah. Hey look, it's a juice bar. Now that is a juice bar. It was time for a coffee break, where I discovered that the truth behind love was 33. I then displayed my infinite skills with a straw. So uh, as you can see here, they're setting up for Ivy's wedding. I do want my wedding like this. No, we should have bubbles. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I wouldn't be against it. A little weird, but cool. And that there is the spaceport. No, I'm joking. But it, how futuristic does that look? I mean, that's just amazing. We absolutely love this place, don't we? Oh, oh shit! I nearly got wet. Oh, so you don't think it's on? If it turns on now, I'm gonna shit myself. And it's a hot enough day for it to turn on too, I might add. <clears throat> You hear that water controlling person wherever you are? Turn the damn tap on. A feather just flew in my mouth as I said that. I think that was karma. Do you see any birds? I don't. The only feather just straight in my mouth. I'm probably gonna die of some horrible disease now. Well, oh, look, another few tree building. And that one's got like a curvy roof. Oh, that one does too. Oh, I can't even look up that far. This whole place is just so cool. Oh, I've almost lost Ivy. Wait for me. It's probably the clearest view of Canton Tower I've had so far. Look at this. Look at how massive this open area is. Is this ever used for anything? Ivy. This open area, is this ever used for anything? All right, so Ivy and I are gonna use the metro system and go to Tianhenan, where there's a the APM system, sorry, and we're going to station number seven, Tianhenan, uh, and we're going to check out yet another shopping center, something that's been around a bit longer, so it probably won't be as new, but probably going to have more cool stuff, right? Hopefully. Um, I don't know. Either way, it's really hot, and I can't wait for the aircon. So complicated. It's actually not, it's the um, most amazing that you saw. Is this our train? Good work, you've caught the traffic jam. <laughs> Everybody followed us. So good. This shopping centre is like a lot more western. You can tell as soon as you walk in, this is the first thing you see. Ooh. Hello, star. <laughs> no star. <laughs> yeah. It feels I know. Oh. Let's follow our noses. Let's make sure it's not Xiao Wang. Xiao Wang. Wang? Wang? What do you say to that word? Wang. Western oh, food. Nothing. Getting a coffee here is a lot more fancy than Starbucks, I know. Hey, yeah, so it's, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty small, very fine. It's 
pretty. Beautiful smell. really rich. Yeah. It's really rich and very chocolatey. Very, very chocolatey. It's lovely. That's amazing. Heaven in a cup. It doesn't have a very strong acidity. No, it's got no acidity. I love it. Yeah. But it has a very strong aroma though. Mm. Oh, so cute. Mm. Yeah, mix it up. Ivy likes ruining things, so here she goes again. Oh, it's very good. It's like a perfect combination. There's pulp, there's orange juice, and then there's like sort of lemon. And in between that you're sort of getting fibres and, you know, the little pulp bits. And it's all really cold. And it's super smooth when it goes down. You don't feel any burn, no acidity, nothing like that. You get sweetness and then it turns momentarily to the tiniest bit of bitter that just covers your tongue until the next time you swallow and then it's all gone and then you just want more. Mm. It's like if coffee was a juice that came out of a fruit. That's what this tastes like. It's amazing. Oh, and cold. A cold fruit, you've opened it up and that's coffee. That's what this tastes like. Hello, and welcome to Pizza Hut in Guangzhou. Pizza Hut, normally quite a terrible restaurant in all Western places, is actually a really fancy sort of a hangout place, sort of like Coffee Club in Australia or um, uh, like Breakfast at Tiffany's in America. <clears throat> Have a look at this menu. So just like Domino's in the rest of the world, Pizza Hut sort of has the sort of kingpin status here, but it's because they had such varietal flavors when they first started here, so they took over quite dominantly, if I may. Steal this menu for a second. Look at these pizzas, just, uh, yes. So Ivy's just gotten her goulash and rice. So this is technically a German dish in an American store in China. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, it's not very Chinese taste. Meant to be very saucy. It's um, very meant to be a really deep brown sauce. It's got a very strong taste of tomato. Yeah. It's got um, pepper in it. Yep, should have lots of pepper. Not too much of cheese in it. It's really much Shouldn't have cheese in it at all if it's goulash. That's right. Uh, hot. That's fine. Uh, Stick it in. Very hot. Okay, so despite the fact that Ivy rubbed it all over my nose. Um, it's basically just tomato sauce. I think they don't know what a goulash is here. The pepper at the end and the beef taste, that's definitely goulash. But the tomato needs to be brown. It needs to be full of onion and garlic and beef stock. I think beef stock is something that's really missing from the taste palette here. And the cheese is a bit weird, it's not meant to be cheese, but then again it's also made with rice, so I mean it is completely different to what a goulash actually is. A lot of Westerners won't even know what goulash is, but it's basically a Hungarian meat dish, uh, more commonly sort of eaten throughout Germany, Austria, those sorts of places as well. I mean Hungary of course as well, but yeah. Alrighty, so my pizza has arrived. All fellow Westerners rejoice. It's a pepperoni pizza. And it looks like there's no random sort of 
alterations of the taste buds of different cultures. It is just a pepperoni pizza. Served on a wooden platter, as it would never be back home. This looks good. So we separate the piece. Don't feed it to me like that. I'm going to grab it I'm and actually... I'm not going to. I'm just showing you to be here. It totally looked like she was going to feed me on the on the spatula there. Mm. The dough is very different. The dough is very, very different. And the cheese, I think, is not cheddar. I think it's Swiss, but it's really good. Let's try these cheesy bits at the end. Mm. That's that sort of fake cheddar that they commonly use at Domino's to fill the cheese. It's really, really good though. Pepperoni is pepperoni. That's it. That's Pizza Hut in Guangzhou.